Hey guys, so let's take a hypothetical and let's assume that you're buying a magic card and you buy in foil and we all know foils are not the best for Magic the Gathering anymore and you take your card that you purchased, maybe you even opened it from a pack and you go play, you have a double sleeve deck and you get a game loss because it is said that your foil card is curved and therefore you can identify it. Now, what did you do wrong? Or did you do anything wrong? It is quite fascinating to me that a company can create a defected product. Uh, this product is meant to be used for tournament play. That is the end goal of this product. And a lot of the car prices depend on how good or how often the card is played in a tournament. You double sleeved it like a good boy, you know, like uh, all the ultra pros that want you to double sleeve and protect your cards. None of this existed when I played, but that's a different story. And you got a game loss from using a card printed by a company. So that is where we currently are. We're currently at the point where the foil quality is so low that it is getting people disqualified in round 12, table one. Table one, if you don't know, is probably the person who's in first and second place playing each other. So it's a person who has, this game loss is meaningful. It's not like the last place person is playing the second last place person. No, this is one and two playing each other and round 12 of a GP, and he gets a game loss. Now you might ask, mm, that's okay. I mean, what's a game loss, right? I think it's the tilt. Like this would upset the majority of Magic players to lose a game this way. Uh, I know all the people are going to nitpick details and tell me about corner cases and rolls and blah, blah, blah. But when I read this, I see is Magic player gets game loss in Magic Tournament for playing official legally purchased Magic product they weren't allowed to play because reasons. This is quite fascinating in my opinion. And it's something where I always felt this way about foils. Back in the old days, we didn't have sleeves. Or if we'd had sleeves, they were penny sleeves. But most of us didn't have sleeves. So some people would make all their lands foil so they can kind of feel, you know, you can kind of feel out. The magic cheating has existed ever since like middle school. I don't know what it is about magic the gathering, but everyone's looking for that little edge and that little edge is cheating your friends, then so be it, right? As you grow up, you realize it's not worth it. But when you're in middle school, you're in middle school. Remember when uh, we had AOL Messenger and we would play this um, totally tangent, but this is kind of middle school magic. And in middle school magic, we would play this survivor game where we would vote each other. And then it was just people cheating the whole time and it was accepted. Uh, and you know, the cards and lap trick that we still use, that magic pros still use today, that was a very common trick back in the day. I remember uh, seeing my friends use it quite often on me. So, interesting. Um, very, very interesting that uh, this has happened. And it shows you how poor the quality is. I think one of my other videos will talk about it from a professional paper maker, a professional paper person. And he has some very valid uh, questions about what's going on with Wizard of Coast. And I think it has to do with saving money. Uh, the printing problem has a very, very big problem. And in fact, I would say Chinese counterfeits are actually better quality than real magic cards in America, at least. I heard, heard the ones in Japanese and Korean are actually higher quality, but I cannot confirm or deny that. I cannot confirm that. So you have probably one of the most interesting circumstances of any game. You have people with very high valuable collectibles and not being able to use them because they're too damaged. That is very, very fascinating uh, that this product is coming out defected. And yes, 
I mean, there's no other way to say it. The product is printed. You buy the product so you can play Magic the game. If you buy a foil, there is the potential that when you're playing Magic the game, you will get a game loss because you bought a foil, even though it's double sleeved. And then don't get me started on sleeves. Like, it's so fascinating when we look at like the big companies today, Magic, Ultra Pro, KMMC, double sleeve company. And it's just like, how did we get here? Binder companies, boxes made from wood for $100, suitcases. Like, I mean, you just gotta look at these uh, companies uh, and what they're building to quote, protect your cards, but why? My question is why? Why can't we just have fun with this game and not care about what the value of the cards are? And this was why Magic was so popular and so awesome back when I was a kid. And I know you guys don't like to hear that, but no one, no one cared about, I mean, no one even knew the price. The majority of us didn't know what was a rare or what was not. I didn't even know there was rare. It's like, I just assume all the dragons and angels were rares and then everything else was crap. There, there was plenty of really bad trades. And you know what, what was uh, the most popular card in my high school or in my middle school? Panther Warriors. Panther Warriors. That was the most popular card. We all thought that was amazing. <laughs> Six power for uh, five mana cost. Just kill me, right? Just game over. Game over. So there comes a time when you look at today and you look at the poor quality cards and then you look at the bad foils, you look at from the vault. I mean, he still haven't fixed that problem. You look at the misprints, you look at the inking issues. I mean, how do they not know they ran out of ink? Like, have they never used a printer before? Like the printer's like, oh, I'm running out of ink, refill me. Contact HP to pay them lots of money for them to send you new ink. I think it's two things. Uh, I think it's one, they're very greedy. And two, they just don't care. Uh, it's like Magic Online. I can tell you this for a fact. Magic Online is gonna die because it is a terrible program with a terrible maintenance cost. It never got fixed, it never got rebooted, it never got designed correctly. They just kind of put band-aids on it and now it's just a giant band-aid. From a developer perspective, I look at it and that would be my worst nightmare for any client. It would be creating a system that, you know, every time a new set comes out, if it has unique abilities and unique keywords, it's very difficult to ingrain the new set into that system because the overall, um, how should I say, a framework or wireframe of the system is not, it's not scalable. You cannot scale it. So that's the problem with some businesses is it's difficult to scale a business. Yes, you can have a little small business on the side, but if you're like mom and pop flower shop and you don't have a, you don't have a website, you're going to go out of business because the internet websites are going to take, it's just same thing happening with magic. I think I made a Rudy video and Rudy shows you how magic will be in the future. It's you have a game store for only to say that you have a game store and you don't have people, you don't have F and M you're not WPN, you don't have people playing at the store, you don't have you don't have a reason for people to be at the store other than to do bigger deals. Because everything you do is sold online. Sports and more is a very good example of that as well. If you don't have overhead, you don't have um, the electricity, you don't have the rent. You know, rent, we pay $3,500 for rent a month. Uh, now that is the agency and you no, know, I think we work from my home and everyone, we work from home at Fridays, Saturdays and Sundays. If we work Saturdays and Sundays, sometimes you have to, but uh, it works for us. And when at the end of the day, everything is going online that you can hire a agency anywhere that you want to remotely. You can hire a lawyer remotely, you don't even need to hire a lawyer. You can hire, you can use legal zoom, right? To fill out the blanks and then a lawyer can check it. A lawyer who checks it, it could be located in India, Great Britain, 
everything that we do now is so different from what it has been in the past. But at the end of the day, unless you care enough not to buy their products, they will continue to sell you terrible products at because A, they make more money. Uh, so inst normally when you, let's say you print a document and the last page is kind of like, it's, you know, we've all seen it, you ran out of ink. Well, are you gonna reprint the last page or do you wanna just you know put the last page there and hope that no one cares? Uh, what's happening here is Wizards of the Coast is they know they have a problem and they refuse to fix it because it makes them more money for them not to fix the problem. And the problem has effect, I mean, it's kind of funny, uh, but it's not funny for this guy, obviously, but it's kind of funny from a outsider's perspective that you're buying a card that you can't use. And then if you actually use the card, you will get a game loss from using the card that you purchase, you use your own money to buy, an official game card. And you can honestly just do it by counterfeit and it won't care. <laughs> like, isn't that hilarious, right? Isn't that fun? That's so funny. Uh, we live in a um, environment where a counterfeit card will get you less, will not get your game lost because it's less detectable double sleeve, of course, than a foil real card, which has cost way more than the counterfeit version of it in non-foil. Anyway, that's it. Bye, guys.